Hello, everyone. Welcome to my world. I hope you're doing well today. Trying to make myself some room here. Whew. Little equipment um, craziness going on here for a minute. But we got it. So how's everybody? Hopefully we're in good shape. Everybody, can you see and hear me? Let me know. Hello, Ina. Thank you. Hey, Nancy. Cheers, everyone. Hey, Kia, also known as Jillian. Jan, Lori, Sylvia. Oh, you like my hair? Thanks. <laughs> I just styled it a little differently today. But I'm glad. Hey, Vicki. Everybody. Vicki's here for everybody. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Tara. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been it's been a month. It has been a month. So how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. Welcome to Drama Free Friday. Hey, Carissa. Queen of emojis. What do we want to get out for supplies today? Well, if you want to art along with me, we're doing paste paper. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Linda. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Rowesta. Rowesta, is that how you say your name? Tell me, tell me in the chat if Rowesta is the correct pronunciation. Because I hear your name pronounced all different kinds of ways. <laughs> I do like to say people's names correctly if I can. Hi, Dot. Uh, Dorothy, sorry. CBE. Hey, Jan. Oh, Jan gets to work watch live today. That's great. Um, hi, Judy. <laughs> Judy says, hi, Barb. Cool kid. Right. <laughs> Rowesta is right. Okay, cool. Thanks. Hey, Marion. Dar. So it's great to have you guys here. Please make each other welcome. And Claus Man is in the house and he's um, checking on things and making sure everybody minds their P's and Q's, which we just seldom ever have any problems with. And I'm grateful for that. And you never know when race might pop in. So uh, he's also known as the technical department. So I have to be really careful about what I say and do. And I'm sure I'm in big trouble for having this right here on my table. But it's going to be here for a minute. It was a late night last night. <laughs> a couple late nights this week. Anyway, so here you go. Make your brain do brain stuff. That's your words of wisdom for today. <laughs> I know, keep illegal fluids hidden. That's right, Jan. And here's your other word of wisdom for the day. See if I can get it where it's not, the, the light's not shining on it. Be grateful. That's right. It sits on my desk. That is from one of my uh, Mandela Madness cards, which we'll talk about in a minute. <clears throat> oh, there's clothes man in the house. Uh, hi, Sharon. Welcome, welcome. Another Marion. So we have our two Marions here. We can start now. Ina, it's really good to see you. Hi, Carolyn. Yes, we're all grateful. We should be grateful. We have plenty. Even when you think you don't have things to be grateful for, there's a ton of things to be grateful for. Uh, <laughs> Crystal likes my hair. Everybody likes my hair. I got it done. I got it cut last week. I have my hair, whether you guys, this is like TMI. I have my hair cut every five weeks. And uh, when I go in, my stylist, whom I have known for many, many years, actually, we went to high school together. And she'll always say, well, what do you like about your hair? Or um, what do you want to do or whatever? And you know what I always say to her? I know this is not like a lot of people, but I always say, I don't care. <laughs> do what you want. So she does what she wants with color. She does what she wants with cut. And then I just come home and deal with it. Um, hi, Debbie. Oh, you just finished the audio book. Oh, you read, <laughs> you listened to my book, Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore on audio. Cool. Gratitude is such a huge part of that. <laughs> for you or for me, Debbie. <laughs> 
I am very grateful. I am very grateful for that entire experience beginning to end. Um, well, I'm glad you're here, Carolyn. Hey, Janet. We're just chatting here for a minute while I suck down the rest of this cup of coffee, which is, you can see, it's getting down to the bottom. So I'm going to suck down the rest of this coffee, let everybody come in. Hi, May. And so if anybody has questions for me or whatever, hey, Kat. Oh, good to see you. Um, so we're just going to shoot the breeze for a minute. So it's been a busy, busy couple of, well, it's been a, well, let me just read, let me just roll back the tape. I took some time off in August and uh, did not a lot. <laughs> now, when I say that, my brain is going 100,000 miles an hour, but I took some time to just breathe and I spent a lot more time writing. And so that was really good for me. And then I've hit, <laughs> as one of my friends used to say, I have hit the bricks. So we are going 900 miles an hour now. Hi, Barbara Sabo. Uh, <laughs> it's not really a new do. It's just whatever my hairstylist decided to do. Maybe it is new. I don't know. Hi, Annette. Um, <clears throat> Kat's sitting at the hair salon getting her hair done. That's cool. So anyway, it's been a, um, I was going to say it's been a long, hot summer, but actually the summer has just gone. I do have a story for you, though. Okay. This is a story of, this is a tomato story. Claus man can chime in as he wishes. <laughs> I may have told you part of this story before. We will get into doing art here in a little bit. Um, but. Claus Man had a birthday in June, and so I bought him a couple of just beautiful tomato plants for his birthday. I mean, they were they were just gorgeous. I paid like, I don't know, $16 for each plant, you know, because they were established, and they were big, and they were green, and they were potted, and they were beautiful, and, you know, I thought, ah, oh, this is perfect. Because they're already established, you don't have to worry about them. One was a cherry tomato, one was a regular big tomato. So I thought, oh, this would be great. And so I gave them to him for his birthday. And actually, I had him sitting outside on the deck. And he went out, in and out, in and out. And I kept thinking, well, he's going to say, well, where'd the tomatoes come from? You know, no, he, <laughs> he didn't even see them. So I finally had to tell him. Your birthday present is out on the deck. And so anyway, he took the tomatoes and he decided to replant them in the ground because, you know, last year we, last year we, I'm trying to make myself not clack my cup on the table. Sorry, that drives me crazy and you. Um, last year we tried growing them or he tried growing them in bales of straw and that worked sort of. You know, but it wasn't maybe the best. But he did get, we did get tomatoes last year. Well, anyway, he plants our two tomatoes, which there's only two of us here now in our house. And so it should have been, we should have had oodles and gobs of tomatoes, right? Hi, Carla. We should have had oodles and gobs of tomatoes. Hi, River City Creative. Oh, boy, I don't remember your name. But welcome. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so he plants the tomatoes out. They're beautiful. He has tended them. He's taken care of them. We should have tomatoes in July and all should be right with the world. And I kept thinking, why don't we have tomatoes? Why don't we have tomatoes? Right? And every little bit I'd say, what? We have tomatoes yet? And so he'd go out. And I mean, he kept them watered and fertilized. I mean, he tended them and they were great. They were beautiful. Lots and lots of tomatoes, mind you. Loaded with tomatoes. Well, hi, Shu. <laughs> well, the, it turns out that there were other things that live in our area that like tomatoes, too. And they have four legs and a really bushy tail, apparently. We even tried accusing Muppet, our black um, rescue dog Muppet, who's lived here for a number of years. We tried accusing her, but that, that didn't fly because she's not outside all that much. 
every time he would get a tomato that was just turning red and we were going to pick it like in a few days, someone would pick it ahead of time. So we cooked up this solution to spray on them to repel the, the squirrels. Well, they just got used to it. So I don't know how many squirrels we had enjoying our tomatoes, <laughs> but they had a great time. They had a wonderful time. So Janet in the chat, uh, Janet Young gave us some, gave me some ideas about using mouse traps to scare them away next year. So we might do that. But anyway, our beautiful tomatoes that we grew and, and he tended so carefully and were so loaded with tomatoes ended up feeding the neighborhood squirrels very well, mind you, very well. <laughs> Debbie has trouble with possums. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So anyhow, here we go. So just a couple of announcements. Tomorrow's a VIP class, which happens at 2 p.m. Eastern. You will get an email later today, VIP group, with um, that information. So don't forget that. And that's our live class that we have once a month. Also, the um, Mandala Madness cards are still available. Make sure that if you would... Uh, I think everybody should have at least one deck, maybe two. The reason I say two is because I have had more fun using this as an art supply. Not just as the cards. I have I have a deck in my bag that I carry with me when I go write. And I pull the card out and I use it as a writing prompt, which works really nice for me. I also have a deck that I've taken apart. And I'm using the bits and pieces from that to decorate and embellish my journal <coughs> as well as I've made a bajillion other projects with it and I still I've done that to one deck and I still have a probably a, at least a third of the deck left to go if you peel the cards apart as I show you in the free mini course that comes with the the cards if you peel those apart um, you get twice as much bang for your buck because then you have art supplies on the front and art supplies on the back and it's just it's really interesting how many different ways I've come up with using that so um, <laughs> Jillian says she still she has her tomato plant on the balcony that she's babying and so far no squirrels good that's great hi Jill Okay, so be sure, hi Athena, hey Dawn, good to see you. So any of you that have um, questions or comments for me, be sure that you put them in caps. Uh, the link to the cards is in the description box below. Yeah, it's b below the video. Check down there, it should be the first link. Um, Barbara Car Clark bought uh, Dilutions 8 inch uh, black journal, square black journal. So, yeah, she's ready to use her cards. And she's loving her Mandel Madness cards. Good, Barbara. I'm glad. And um, Dawn, let's make a mess. Dawn has a YouTube channel and she was gifted a set of cards by, I think it was Linda Green. I might be wrong about that. Anyway, Dawn's been using hers too. And uh, so, yeah. Okay. Crafting Mama Shelly is in the house. Hello, Miss Shelly. We miss you. And I'm not going to say anything else because I totally understand needing a break. Totally. Oh, my gosh. Linda McAllister. I haven't seen you in the chat forever. Good to see you, girl. Um, all right. So let's see. What else? I have a couple of magazines to show you. And I have some happy mail to show you. I'm not going to show you everything, I'm going to show you bits and pieces of it. And um, and then we're going to get crack in here. We're going to do some paste paper today. And I've got a desk full of stuff. Desk full of stuffs. So, first of all, let's talk about what we did last month. Oh, and by the way, I was totally confused about what month it was. <laughs> I recorded the class for the VIP group 
And at the beginning of it, I say, welcome to your August 2018 VIP class. It didn't even dawn on me until the very end of the video. It's like when I was saying, I'll see you next time on, you know, whatever month. And I went, oh, it is September. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes your brain does a little loop-de-loop, -loop, right? So it is September. So in August... What we did was we just kind of messed around with some oh, too much, too many scraps. Hold on just a minute. Let me get rid of all my scraps that sort of fell out. They sort of fell out, see? All right, maybe, maybe. All right, so what we did last month was um, I showed you a little bit about using shape tape which is the frog shape tape and you can see it in here and using very diluted sprays and stencils and so forth to create a background and I did we had two of them and then I took images these are images from my various mandala ebooks and I had screens pre created with them and then I screened these on very just various places on the paper on two different papers. This is a Seth After stencil, stencil, by the way. We'll talk about that him in a minute. So anyway, these are just different mandalas that I screen printed. And here's the reason I screen printed them. And I had, took the time to have the screens created. And I would have done a whole bunch more, except that the Thermofax that my friend had that we were burning the screens with quit. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I'm so sad. It was hurting me. It was hurting me. Yeah, but anyway, so I would have done a lot more, but yeah, that wasn't an option. Anyway, so I got two of them done before the machine decided to be Henri. And by the way, you can get screens created from other people online. Just search that ability. But the reason I screened them is so that I got the outline on here and I didn't have to redraw it. And that is kind of fun, you know, to do that. Okay, so these are the originals done on cans and mixed media paper. Then I took these to the um, copy store and I had them copied on just regular paper. Okay, so you can see it's kind of glossy on the regular paper and it doesn't cost very much. This is 11 by 17 paper. It doesn't cost very much to do that. And so I had several copies made. This is the other one. So, he, let me show you the original, okay? This is the original. That's the copy. And you're getting a little bit of reflection because the paper is glossy. But it is a very reasonable rendition, right? And I did the same thing with both of them. And then what happens is when you do that kind of stuff, when you make copies of your work it could be journal pages it could be whatever then you can cut them up and use them in whatever way you want so I just use them on um, to make some cards so if you take the time I hear often from people I will hear people talk about oh Barb just spends so much time making mandalas or I could never do that because it just takes too much time well, take the time and do whatever. It doesn't have to be mandalas. It could be whatever you want to do. Take your time, make the thing, and then go have it copied, right? And then you've got a whole resource of um, stuff that you can repurpose and redes redesign and redo and reuse. Tell me how much time that takes to go have copies done. I'm telling you, uh-oh. I see races in the house. I see races in the house. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Peg. So, copy your art. Use it. Right? So, that's what I did last month. And I have used that, and I have created cards with them, and I have sent some of the cards out already. So, the, the place that I used to do the copies happened to be the UPS store. All right, that was last month. So that brings us up to now. So I want to call your attention to a couple of magazines. And I'm sure many of you know 
um, about Cloth Paper Scissors magazine. If you don't, you need to get this magazine. Now, honestly, I always look at it. I don't have a subscription to it. I always look at it because I uh, uh, there have been rare occasions where it wasn't worth, you know. I'm not saying the magazine wasn't worth it. I'm saying that I didn't get enough from, wasn't going to get enough out of the magazine. I, okay, let me be honest. True confession. When I look at magazines, I have to have, it has to have at least three things in it that I know that I can use or pull from for something in the future or be inspired by or whatever for me to buy the magazine. Because magazines, let's face it, are pricey little things. Yes. Um, Annette, that is not true. Annette, that is not true. She's telling Race that I danced on the table. That is not true. <laughs> Hi, Josie. Telling stories. Hi, Beth. And welcome to anybody that I didn't happen to see come into the chat. Thank you so much for spending your Friday afternoon. It is Drama Free Friday after all. And why is it Drama Free Friday? Because we just leave all the drama. There is plenty of it going on in the world and on the internet and everywhere. And not that I don't, um, not that I'm not aware, not that I don't keep up with it, but I choose to make it stay outside my studio, especially during Drama Free Friday. All right, back to the magazines. This one was definitely worth investing in. And this one, I wanted to call your attention to an article in it, and it's on page 70. And this is Diary of an Artist in Residence. Okay, I don't know if you recognize this guy right here, but this is Seth Apter. And Seth has been a guest on on the show here as a creative chat guest a couple of times and he is a delightful person he's an amazing artist and this article I have read bit by bit digested every little thing about it there were many things that were interesting to me and um, and then I'm gonna go back and read it again one of the things that's so interesting to me in this article is that he uses excerpts from his journal and I know there are other people that journal in the world besides me but I haven't met too many of them <laughs> as far as artistic creative people and it's just that I haven't met them it's not that they aren't, aren't out there but uh, I found it so entertaining to that he let us in have a peek into his process during this time that he was doing that and it's a nice long article so definitely definitely worth the read and this is all of his artwork that he created while he was here so uh, i'm telling you uh, have i read molly makes i have i have seen molly makes a couple of times um but it's been a while it's been a while i have to look for that again hi messy table i think you're vicky right um <laughs> and that's one and that wanted to see if he would believe you <laughs> oh, Carla says her number is five. It has to have five things in the magazine before she will will buy it. So I understand. So yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to call your attention to that because that was really cool. There is another magazine out there that um, Seth has a little article, and I say little because it was one page versus a number of pages in this one. And I was really surprised because I rarely, you know, look through this magazine. I don't know what made me do it because I'm, I'm typically not, I don't consider myself a scrapbooker, although I probably am, but um, I consider myself more of an art journaler or um, journal in writing. And this, the magazine is called Creative Scrapbooker. It's the fall 2018 issue, and um, I just happen to be leafing through it. And there was an article on page 78 called Passport to Creativity. And it was Seth. <laughs> and I was equally surprised. Um, <laughs> Race. Race is trying to, he's trying to take me off the track. He wants to know if I've read Amelia Bedelia. Okay, Race. I don't know what's up with him today. Hi, Mary. What is up with race today? Trying to distract me and get me right off the track. 
Cheers, race. So anyway, I was surprised that, that Seth was featured in that article of that magazine because I just didn't expect him to be in a scrapbooking magazine. Although I know he has kept scrapbooks because he talked about them and showed us some. But it was a whole thing of asking him questions that he answered. And a couple of them that, that they asked him was, what inspires you? Which I've asked him too. That's a great question for any artist. What favorite, uh, what are your favorite products? And his favorite product, and he, it's, there's no coincidence that he's a designer for this company. Um, but I think he likes this paint, whether he, you know, is a designer or not. And this is the Paper Artsy Fresco Finish. I know there's a reflection, but it's the Fresco Finish Chalk Paint. So these are some of his colors. I ordered a couple of sets from him, which I have not used yet. So I'm going to crack those out here before long. But he said that the fresco finish, the fresco, the chalk finish, fres well, anyway, it's a chalk paint with a fresco finish or something like that. Anyway, I just wanted to call your attention to that. So some good articles out there in magazines. Um... And I wanted to ask you guys one question. How many of you have used his baked texture embossing powder? I was just curious if you've used it and what your experience has been. I know Jan, who's in the chat, I'm going to show her happy mail here in just a second, has used it. And um, I don't know. I really love it. So a lot of chat going on about Amelia Bedelia. <laughs> Hi, Tori. All right. Not yet. Get the baked texture. Oh, Peg. Yeah, Peg is. Peg, are you uh, on the design team for Emerald Creek? Peg Robinson? Because I think. Hey, Travis. Stencil Girl had a blog hop with Emerald Creek. Yes. Okay, so Peg Robinson, who also has a YouTube channel. Um, has is on the design team from Emerald Creek. I thought that was the case because I've seen some of the the um, things you've done with the embossing patterns. Gorgeous. Just saying. All right, one other magazine. Now, this one, in my opinion, if you like the study of creativity that is worth the price of admission, it's not cheap. It's a $14 magazine, but I'm going to show it to you because, well, first of all, the name of my business and website is howtogetcreative.com. And of course, you're going to know why this magazine appealed to me. The Science of Creativity. Imagination at every age, the power of sleep, your inner genius. That's what it says here. It's a special time edition. Well, first of all, I was drawn right to this because of this image. This is, this is a magazine that for me is worth reading with a um, highlighter in my hand, which I have done some of. A Fine Madness. Poet Robert Lowell was one of a long list of creative giants who grappled with serious mental illness. Okay, now, I am not asking race or clause men what they think of that statement, and no one better ask them either. Just saying. <laughs> uh, seven Secrets to Unleashing Your Inner Genius. Uh, pushing Your Envelope. And so forth and so on. Look at that image. Is that not the coolest image? Ah, uh, no. Creativity at any age. Yeah. So if you're in a bookstore, if you have access to this, it's it's more of a magazine than it is a book. Or it's more of a, sorry, I said that totally bass backwards. It is more of a book than it is a magazine. It is not very thick, so that's probably why it falls in magazine category. But there's images on the back, which are pretty cool. But it's a uh, $14 U.S. It's $17 in Canada magazine. So anyway, um, it's already dog-eared. Yeah, just wanted to show you that. Okay, quick run through some happy mail. <laughs> Clause man, no comment. And races. I wouldn't say you were an evil genius. <laughs> Probably emphasis on the evil, right? 
this happy mail found its way to me because Jan, Lady True North Jan in the chat, is so sweet that she always remembers my birthday. And, you know, I try to just let it just float on by, but Jan does not. <laughs> and she writes these wonderful letters, okay? Wonderful long letters, with complete with pictures. And it's, it's the kind of thing I have to sit down with a cup of tea or coffee and just enjoy. Because I love, she has a very wonderful writing style, too, that I deeply appreciate. So I'm just going to show you a few of these things real quickly. I'm not going to show you everything. Um, but in here she made some cards. And the cards, if you look at them, she carefully folded them inside out, which is really nice. But in here she's used some of the Seth, emboss Seth Apter embossing powders on the butterflies. She knows my love of butterflies and how significant they are in my life. And, uh, and these are her sketches. So she included, I'm going to show you all of them. So these are sketches, and uh, you'll have to ask her how she did them. I'm assuming that they are watercolor and, and pen, but I don't know that. So each one of these is one of her sketches, which is so nice, and it's really neat the way she did it with a, a doily folded. And, but she folded them up so that it would protect the artwork. Isn't that neat? And then she sent the envelopes with them and packaged them in these little, in an envelope, which is really nice. And she sent me two sets of those. I know, so awesome. Is Mary, are you streaming tonight? Mary Atelier, At Atier, I think is how you say it. The Mary Atier. She streams on Friday nights, I believe. You can always click on somebody's, uh, the three dots beside their name or their name and go follow their channel if you'd like to do that. So here's some more of Jan's beautiful images. The, ca the cards are lovely. They really are. And a long time ago, I think Jan was, I mean, this is like a long time ago. Jan was kind of doubtful about her sketching ability or painting ability or something. I'm like, what are, what are you talking about? You crazy girl. Um, but each one of them has an embossed butterfly. This is lavender. She has a huge lavender harvest um, at her house. And she always somehow manages in this little package is freshly, well, not freshly now because it's dried now, but she sent me lavender. So her packages not only look great, they smell great. And so then I add this to my little collection of Jan lavender. So that is really cool. And somehow, I have no idea how, but when she sends that to me, it doesn't get wrecked. I don't know how that happens. I have no idea. No idea. But, you know, yeah. Anyway, okay. Some other things that she sent... Do you see a theme here? <laughs> she sent me a, a napkin that has beautiful images on it. She sent me um, some a piece of linen. This is really beautiful. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's a piece of linen with butterflies on it. She sent me a book that she created that has butterflies galore. Okay, butterflies galore. I don't know where this little guy came from. I... I uh, obviously pulled him off of something and a butterfly applique and there's a little pocket in here it's a little book that she made i'm going to put this little butterfly in here so this we're going to use this as kind of an inspiration it's a an accordion book the illustrations are beautiful and it comes out you can take it out and she put pockets with little tags in them just a beautiful little book beautiful beautiful little book isn't that cool so you can make and she put a, a piece of yarn around the spine of the book to hold the book in place okay now I've messed myself up there we go and then she made a little uh, a little wrap around 
cover for it to hold it in place. Isn't that neat? And more embossed butterflies. So neat. Love that. Love that. And then she sent me a couple of brochures about um, things that she knew I would be interested in. And she sent me one of these, which I think is a... Um, I don't know if this is from... I think this might be from a piece of scrapbook paper, but I'm not positive. But with a beautiful butterfly on it. And then she sent me... Look at this. She sent me a flock of butterflies. Look at this, people. Look at this. All right. And this isn't all of them because I already used a bunch of them. Okay. She sent me a whole... I don't know if flock is the right word, but... She sent me a whole flock of butterflies. Look, that's how many butterflies came in this package. <laughs> hey, Joyce. <laughs> I have not been to see my tree in a long time. I have not. Joyce knows about my, my special tree that I go to. You'd, you'd think, you'd think, and not that there's anything wrong with anybody that's a tree hugger, but you'd think I was a bona fide tree hugger if you knew how much I love that, that tree. I haven't been there in a long time, probably a couple years. Anyway. Um, how beautiful these butterflies are. I have used them in my current journal that I'm writing in. And I also use them. I've used them in an art journal page, which I'm going to show you. Those of you that are members of howtogetcreative.com can see this particular, you can see this in being created, this page being created. Uh, but these are those same butterflies. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about that, Travis. I'm sure you can always visit in your mind, though. I do that a lot with the ocean. I visit in my mind. Yes. Um, and so here are the same butterflies used on an art journal page. And what I do when I created this page, because it took a while, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but art journaling does not come quickly for me. It takes time. And so when I was doing that art journal page, I was telling a story about why butterflies are so significant in my life. So, yeah, sometimes, sometimes my mouth just gets open and just starts telling stories. It does what it does. So anyway, Miss Jan, thank you so much. I did send you an email about everything in here. Thank you so, so, so much. So, uh, Race wants to know if I will be visiting any place anytime soon. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to go visit the technical department this coming week. Actually, a week from today, I will be on the plane. And I don't think I've been out to see him since about 2005, so I'm looking forward to that very much. And um, I'm going to get to go and see uh, my ocean, so I'm excited about that. You love it when I tell stories, Jan? Did you, did you listen to the butterfly story? That's true. Uh, Travis says that's true. He took a photo. I know. I get it. Hi, Sherry. Um, I'll be in L.A. Dawn, I will be in L.A. If it works out for us to get together, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. You have my email, so you can get a hold of me, and maybe we can work it out. Okay, that, because that would be great. Um, all right, so let's get on to, after all this time, let's get on to some art, shall we? All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to make some paste paper. Um, whoops. Hang on a minute. I just, there we go. <laughs> I accidentally bumped my mouse. It's never good when you bump the mouse. Don't make the mouse unhappy, people. Mm -mm. Unhappy mice can get real cranky. All right, so I'm going to show you a few examples. I'm way overdue. I am. It's true. Fortunately, he's been here since uh, so a, a number of times, so I'm grateful for that. There's always much to be 
grateful for. So always much to be grateful for. All right. So let's take a look at some paste papers. I get a lot of questions about paste papers because it's one of my favorite things to do. So these are some various, I pulled some examples of things from my stash of stuff so I could show you some examples before we get going. These are just some various things. Some of, most of these have had multiple layers of paste paper done on them. Paste paint, I call it. Now, there are, there are bona fide people out there, bona fide, as in serious paste paper artists. I'm not one of those. I would fall more in the category of craft paste paper making, probably. But I do it my way, and I love it. So thanks to a friend of mine for introducing me to this. Um, yeah, and I kind of took it off in my own direction, but that's what we all do, right? So most of these have multiple layers. You can see the layer in the background here. This one had some stamping on it. T typically, I just um, scratch into the paint. This is one where it's only had one layer, and it was on this bright yellow cardstock. You can do it on anything. You can do it on newspaper, music paper, text paper. You can do it on ugly paper. You can do it on colorful paper. Doesn't matter. So this has only had one layer, and you can see that it just really, you know, needs something else. It, it's a similar process, not similar process, but it has some a similar appearance in some ways to printing with a gel plate, um, you know, doing mono printing, except I, that what it has in common with gel, uh, doing things on a jelly plate is that I usually do things in multiple layers and I do that usually on the paste paper as well. So this one, I just wanted to show you what it was like when it had just one layer. Okay. Um, here is another one. This one, and here's the deal. With paste paper, this looks really plain to me. And I try to have a variety of plain, plainer patterns and more, you know, colorful patterns because I like having that variety to pull from. But if there's something you don't like, you just put another layer on top of it. And I have done that many, many times. It works with any kind of paint. I'm trying to catch this. This has a glitter paint on it. Sometimes the glitter doesn't stick. This one also has glitter paint on it and metallic paint. You can use any kind of paint. The person I learned this from was using, she even used old, um, I don't know if it was, I forgot what the name of it was, but it was a liquid embroidery paint that she'd had forever. Mm-hmm, forever. Um, and that worked too. But see, some of them, see the different numbers of colors and I'll show you exactly how I do this and how I start with it and you can even take ugly papers these are scrapbook papers that I thought were a little bit on the unusable side for me and I um, did the paste paper treatment on them okay here's another one these were this was another one that I thought was an ugly scrapbook paper and this is paper some of these are paper weight some of them are cardstock weight and here's another one this design back here in the background that is from the scrapbook paper and some of this one is metallic paint craft paint and here's another one again this has a lot of metallic on it okay so that is kind of where we are um, headed so there's some of the after so now let's do the before so you can see exactly what we do what I do there's for everything I get a lot of questions about this because there are two full-length classes sample classes from the member area of how to get creative com and um, there are two full-length classes there and they are also those same two classes are available here on YouTube one is paste paper pizzazz and the other one I think is paste paper is marvelous or something like that I don't remember exactly because I did them a long time ago anyway that process is very detailed and I still get lots and lots of questions about the 
the process you know why doesn't just plain acrylic paint work why do you know what do you have to do why do you do this and I'm gonna just here okay I'm gonna let you in on a secret okay I don't know everything it's the truth now people might beg to differ with you like the technical department <laughs> Because he might think that I come across that way sometimes, which I don't mean to do. I don't know everything. So um, I say try it and see. Try it out. See if it works. I'm just telling you and showing you what works for me and what I like. So there you go. Okay. So step one in my process is I pull out a bunch of stencils. So here are the stencils that I used for the majority of these papers and I'm going to tell you the names of them. This is Art Deco Leaves. These are from the Crafters Workshop. This next one drives me absolutely crazy. I almost said a bad word. It drives me crazy because it is, do you, look, do you see this? See this? It grabs everything. It's a great stencil, but it grabs everything. It drives me nuts. It's called Squiggles. Mary, I fooled you. <laughs> this one is called um, Mod Squil <laughs> Yeah. Try that again. Mod Spirals. Okay. I love this one. I love all of these, actually. This is Honeycomb. Okay. This one is my all-time favorite ever of any stencil I ever had anytime, anywhere, any place. It's called Circle Grid. I don't know if this one's available any longer, but if it's not, it should be. This one is called Echoes. Okay, this is Echoes. These are all crafter, the Crafters Workshop. This one is Magic Ladder. Okay. This one is called Chevron. These are all the large ones, the 12 by 12s. And then this one is a Deco, uh, Deco Art Americana Decor stencil. And uh, I don't know the name of it, but the number is 201507. So that tells you uh, what the stencils are that stencils are that I used in most of what I just am now going to show you. Okay? Okay. So the first thing I do, this is white cardstock, plain old white cardstock. Nothing, 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 nothing fancy about this cardstock. This came from the craft store. It was the big Mamba Jamba package from the craft store. And I'm sorry about the air conditioner in the background, but it's just too hot here not to have the air conditioner on still. So what I've done is I lay down the stencils and I put a whole, what I do is I lay out a whole bunch. I could do this out in the garage with plastic on the, on the floor, plastic on the table. And I just lay out a whole bunch of white pieces of cardstock or whatever I'm working on. I spread out the stencils and then I spray them with Dilutions sprays. Okay. Now I have not used the metallic, the ones that are the shimmer sprays that I'm sure they work fine. I have not used them. I am using the regular dilution sprays and I'm gonna to have to replenish my stock here before long because I keep using these up and I just spray them so I'm just going to get out of the picture first of all and then I'm just gonna give you a look at what I do and then when I sprayed them then I take the stencil and I turn them upside down and I print whatever's on the stencil gets printed then on on the cardstock as well. Now, this cardstock is just nothing fancy. It's just plain old absorbent cardstock. And um, this is, if you have worked with um, dilution sprays, you'll know they are highly, highly water soluble. Okay? That works to my advantage as I do this. And I did all of this last night in about, oh, um, less than an hour maybe 45 minutes because it was hot out there man my favorite stencil can we just take a moment <laughs> i 
I love this one almost as much. I love all these stencils. You can cut your own stencils. This was one where I just printed the stencils after they were sprayed, just printed them on there. So you can see the, the square edges and stuff. I don't care. Okay. So flipping through, this is that one that's so unruly, but isn't that a great stencil? It makes a great pattern. So some of them, this is one where I turned the stencils over and just printed on top soaked up the ink. Now I do, this is another one done that same way, when I come inside after I've done a bunch of spraying like this then I do clean the stencils off because the stencils get very very full. I love this one too. The stencils get very very full of ink. As I said it's highly water soluble and so if you don't want to get that ink transferred to everything else you do you're gonna have to wash the stencils. Mm -hmm. But because it is so highly water soluble it will rinse off pretty quickly. Pretty isn't it? And here's another one. This one was not in my um, batch of uh, stencils that I used. This was one that was left over from another session. Okay so that is all of those pages. Okay all those pages I did at one time. This is all eight and a half by eleven white cardstock that's all I used so those are all ready to go then I take um, this little box of Elmer's art it's called um, Elmer's art paste here we go Elmer's art paste Elmer's art paste there is a link down in the description box you can get three of these for not too much money or you could, you know, if you got friends close by, then you can uh, buy the package of three and, you know, you just do a bunch of them together. You know, everybody take one. It's a very reasonably priced product. It's used, this is actually used for paper mache, I believe. That's what it was created for. It's a powder. And this amount right here will make a whole gallon. And that's not quite, if you do a lot of paste paper, it's not a lifetime supply, but for a lot of people it would be. And then what I do is I take, um, I take a gallon, whoop, okay, my camera's going to hate this. We're getting ready to replace equipment and change equipment out, and so uh, we will have some different options here shortly. Um, this is a gallon of distilled water or drinking water originally and I um, put that, can you see it's thicker than water? So it thickens the water and I wrote the instructions on how to mix it so I pour it into a large bowl, add the art paste very slowly and whisk it together. Once you get it all whisked together, it does take a little bit to do that, then I let it sit for 30 to 60 minutes before using. This one has been in here, here, this one's been in here since um, 2015. It doesn't go bad, and so that's art paste, okay? And I have it labeled right here, art paste, and I have my container taped on here. It's very very scientific around here. Very scientific. Labeled. <laughs> Etc. Okay. Now, this goes back to a while back. A friend of mine, an online friend of mine, I was using a, uh, a foam egg carton to mix up my paint. And after a while, it started leaking and made a big mess. And she felt sorry for me. <laughs> so she sent me this egg carton. All right, ice cube tray, sorry. <laughs> egg carton on the brain. So this has got the art paste already in it, about halfway up, and so we're just going to mix up some colors. All right? Now, um, I also use foam brushes with this, and I use texture tools. I'll show you that in a minute. But I have to show you that um, I have a thief. I live with a thief. Actually, I live with two thieves. 
Okay, I live with two thieves. And I'm going to show you who they are because I caught them red handed. One in particular I caught red handed. Okay. Do you see this? Right back in this corner, right back, sorry, right back there. That is my art box full of old brushes and um, foam brushes in particular. And this thief right here goes over if that box is down there as it is right now and he looks all innocent and everything right now, right? But he will take his mouth and then he encourages his friend um, to, I know that the light's reflecting on it very badly, but hopefully you can get the idea. And he's trying to act like he didn't do it. But I will come in here in my studio and the next thing you know, there are foam brushes all over the place. All over the place. Because they will go over there and they thieve them and take them out. And then Chance takes them and he'll go everywhere in the studio and he plays with them like they were a mouse. He'll get it and he'll toss it. He'll toss it and then he'll chase it. And then he tosses and he brings it back. It's a challenge to be around here in this place, let me tell you. Any hoot. So I have managed to save um, a bunch of foam brushes from the thieves. And so I use, I try to use one foam brush per uh, color. All right, so we're gonna mix up some colors of art paste. And I start out with them using, you know, being pretty um, separated and before you know it, they get all you know contaminated but and how much do I put in I don't know I just put it in there till it gets the right color if it doesn't look like it's the right color when I brush it on the cardstock I add some more paint so this is a uh, deco art metallic uh, dazzling metallic and this one happens to be Emperor's gold and then I just use a craft stick and I wipe it off I mix it up then I wipe off the craft stick and go to the next one this one is Dazzling Metallics Peacock Pearl. Hey, Hotty Popo. Good to see you, my friend. All right, so you can tell when it gets mixed up. Right now, there's, you know, there's, you can see that it's definitely separated. Once the paint is combined with the art paste, I call it paste paint. You can call it anything you like. That's what I call it, paste paint. Okay? See how pretty that is? And that one is bright red, which is that's a total lie, but that's the name of it. Folk art, bright red, metallic. It's not bright red, but there it is. All right, the other thing I'm going to use is I'm going to use some... Um, colors of Liquitex Basics and we're gonna put some of those colors in here and these are I have this small set of tube paints that I want to use up and so we're gonna put some of these and see how they work what do you think what do you think hey Jude hey Jude Now, although I have put art paste in every one of these containers, I'm not going to take the time to mix up every one of these. I'll do more of that later. I'm just squirting some tube paint into these. They look like little worms, don't they? So the colors I have are, this is cadmium red, light hue. This one is Cad Yellow Medium Hue. This one is Alizarin Criminant, uh -huh. Alizarin Crimson Hue Permanent. This one is Light Green Permanent. And the one I have in my hand at this moment is Cerulean Blue Hue. 
All right, so let's see how these mix up. Hi, Azure Muse. Diane, right? Hi, Patricia. Use them up. I'm telling you, that is the truer words were never spoken. Now, because these are tube paints and they're thicker, these are going to take longer to um, mix into the art paste. I can see that. So we're going to not worry about it a whole lot. So I'm just trying to squish it up a little bit. The craft paints and the liquid paints, which if you um, had golden fluid acrylics that you were willing to part with <laughs> and use in this way would work beautifully. The more liquid the paint, the easier it's going to stir up. And you cannot really keep this paint. You can keep it for a little bit, but you're not going to keep it long term. So don't think that well i'm going to mix it up and then i'm going to save it you know and use it next month no it won't last it will not last hi kimberly hi Zandra. how many people we have here today somebody tell me in the chat because i don't know okay And thank you everybody for being here. I appreciate your spending your time with me. Great. Thank you everybody. I appreciate that. Thank you for telling me. All right. So we will start with these colors. And then if we decide we want to add more, we will. All right. Yeah, if you want to give me a thumbs up, um, if you enjoy what I do here and you want to do a thumbs up on the video, that would be super too, whether you're watching live or watching recording. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five colors that are flat colors, just plain old acrylic paint colors out of tubes. And then we have three colors that are metallic. So let's just see what this does. I can definitely tell that the, the tube paints don't tube paints don't mix up as well but you know hey if we don't like it I won't use them again I just decided that I should try them and you know what I got to do one more color actually two let's just real quick let's mix up oh maybe three all right I lied I'm going to use this one which is light magenta okay just real quick Real quick, indulge me just a little bit longer. So that we're not just, you know, Johnny One Note here. Okay, light magenta. And that is a um, Master's Touch acrylic. This one is bright aqua green, one of my favorite colors. Lid is clogged up. This one's getting empty. This one almost needs a new need a new little bit of this. While I'm here, I'm going to squirt in that lavender which is bright purple, brilliant purple it's called. Whoops. Some brilliant purple got over into the cerulean blue. Sneaky little dickens. And then I'm going to add a little bit. Look at me. I say, oh no, we're not going to mix all these up. So what am I doing? I'm mixing them all up. Yeah, the colors are beautiful. Metallics are absolutely one of my favorites. The colors will get um, 
they will get contaminated pretty easily. So while we're here, we'll uh, mix that purple in with that blue a little bit. Love this color. Who doesn't love, if you don't like aqua or uh, turquoise, I don't know. I don't know about you. So these are mixing up pretty well with the paste, the art paste. And then this one, the brilliant, what is it? Brilliant yellow green. Another one of my favorite colors. I love this limey, bright green. Love it. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. Now, when you mix, when you start painting these on your papers, if you don't want to make brown, then you can't uh, use things that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Guess what? I don't pay any attention to that whatsoever. I use whatever I feel like using. Okay, so I'm going to move this off to the side. I'm going to see if I can keep this where you guys can see it. I'm going to pull in a, uh, this is a Tim Holtz Arranger craft mat that I've mounted on a board. And I'm going to work with my papers going this direction so hopefully you can see. Alrighty, so here we go. You ready? Are you ready? Hi, Joan. Everybody ready? All right, let's pick a color. Let's go with this green. And remember what I said about Dilutions paints being super water soluble. So they're going to move around. So you can see how it makes the um, the art paste makes the colors much more transparent. And then I use texture tools of whatever kind. And then I texture through the paint. The art paste will keep the paint from slumping, okay? And then I'm just going to leave this like this. So what you're going to see happen in this first layer is you're going to see those inks move around and add color, okay? Which I love. This one does not have enough color, and so um, I'm going to get a little bit of craft paint and add into that, so be right back. So I'm going to add into this um, citron green into that one that was a Liquitex color, if I can get it to come out. Hello, come on, into the, into the hot tub. The craft paints often work really really well because they are so chalky so we'll see how that one works with the addition of a little craft paint in it okay now this takes a little while to dry and the papers will curl up and carry on um, and it's like okay well so and if you want to add even more you can do things going the other way and I usually have a rag off to the side and I'm wiping that whoops, um, after I've dragged the tool through the paint, okay? So let it dry. So I just have a big sheet of plastic on the floor beside me. So let's grab another one. And um, let's try this green again now that I've added a little more paint to the mixture. There we go. See what I'm talking about? That gives us a little more green. 
Now the ink is going to transfer into the paint in my ice cube tray. So the ink is going to get in here and then the paint is going to, you know, do its thing over here. Yeah, I can tell that with the tube paint it needs more um, pigment, more paint in it. But you can see even with that um, highly water soluble ink spray, it still maintains its integrity. You can do texture tools out of old room keys. You can cut your own. But this is just the first layer. The thing I like about this, so there's that one. Okay. The thing I like about this is you're, it's similar to jelly plate printing in some ways that you're building, I build layers with it, but I get to see what I'm doing instead of making the, putting all the stuff on the plate and then putting the paper on and then going, oh, cool, you know, having the ooh, ah moment when you peel it up. I get to see it as it happens. All right. So, and it's a good idea if you have something to just kind of keep your mat a little bit clean-ish. All right, let's go this way. I obviously can't keep the paint in the picture, so you'll just have to go with the flow here, people. Go with the flow. All right, let's do a metallic. Let's see what we get with the metallic. So this is that metallic red. I like being able to do the, the um, thin translucent layers of color. Uh, I would say they're more like transparent versus translucent. And let's try this um, red, this um, cad red hue, which is more of an orange. Now the paper absorbs this paste paint pretty quickly. Okay, so we got that. And then just take whatever it is you want to take to texture it with. You can't wait very long to texture the paint because it starts drying immediately. So you can see over here where the paint was wetter, I get more texture. Okay. Let's go to, let's just take some more. Okay, so here's another one. Um, let's do a, um, that purple color. And normally when I'm doing this and nobody's here watching me, I put on either some music or another video or something in the background and I just don't think. And that's your best thing in the whole wide world is don't think. Okay? Don't think just do. You can do as many colors as you want. You can do one color, you can do two colors, you can do three, you can do four, but you have to move quickly. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to texture the paint because it's going to set up and start drying too fast to do that. With every subsequent layer, what you're going to see is that that ink spray from the dilutions is going to disappear. It goes, it doesn't disappear, it just goes deeper. Okay, so there's another one. All right. If you have any questions for me, um, put them in caps.
Yes, you can do it with starch. If you'd rather do it with starch, you can use starch. You can use wallpaper paste to do to get similar effects. Absolutely. This just happens to be consistent. Um, the art paste is consistent. Where sometimes uh, anything that thickens the paint a little bit will it's worth a try using and see what you get. Yeah, but you can use starch. I have a very hard time finding liquid starch now because yeah, I was looking for liquid starch in the grocery store the other day for something I was doing and couldn't find it. They didn't have it anymore. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's one of my best art supplies. What are you doing taking my, art, my uh, liquid starch out of the grocery stores? This is terrible. Yeah, they did. They took it away from my grocery store. I'm going to have to look elsewhere. I didn't have time that day to um, go looking for what else was available. Now, you can do things with stamps and stuff like that too. I'm not going to do that today. This is one of these wedge foam tools and you can draw through the paint. As the paint gets drier, it stops reacting so you don't get as much detail. This is like jelly plate printing in that you have to have a lot of room. So I have plastic set up on the floor and the sponsors are cloistered away from me. The sponsors are my cats, in case you're new here and don't know. Uh, because it does take a little while for these to dry. Hopefully we'll get enough done that we are some dry enough. In fact, I'm going to turn on my fan here in just a second so that I can um, put a, you can see some of the second layers of things going on. I don't know about cornstarch. I've never tried cornstarch. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Most people that are bona fide, you know, that do this as a real art form, cook the paste and they cook it from, um, seems like it's rice flour. You can find recipes online and you can find people who, you know, do the whole art um, you know, use it as an art, fine art way of doing art. That probably made no sense, but anyway, I know what, I know what I meant. So let me show you what I have, what my setup is here at the moment. So handheld camera doesn't work so well. So I'm trying to get the shot ready for you. There. So that's what we've done so far. And so I have this set up with plastic on the floor beside me. That's me. That's my apron. So it's just off to the side. Yeah, so that's what I got going on down there. Um, so I'm going to turn the fan on my stuff here for a second because I want to see if we can kind of force some of them to dry a little faster than they want to without blowing them away. All right, let's see what happens. If it doesn't work, well, no, don't put the fan on. Okay, back to the table. So here's another one. Yeah, cornstarch would have to be heated to get it to thicken. That's true. Let 
but the the paste when the the um, fine artists that do this that's what they will they will it's a cooked process but I don't remember what the ingredients are exactly now you want you don't want the fan or whatever blowing on what you're doing here because you need this paint to stay wet long enough to be able to texture into it. So you, this is one of those things, if you are a dilly-dallier with your art, this is not the thing for you, okay? You don't have to do the same um, texturing on the whole thing. You can go whatever way you want to go. Different patterns, okay? Like that. So there's that one. Three different colors. Alright, any questions so far? Oh, thanks Patricia. Everybody likes my hair today for some reason. That's very nice of you. Okay, let's do this one with the leaves. Hi, Nancy. Yeah, four times out. Hi, Rosemary. Sorry, I missed what that was referenced to. Hi, Regina. No, Santa Ana winds would not work with this at all. <laughs> I got to put something on my on my paper that's blowing here. Hold on a second. Okay, that will drive me bananas listening to that. Anybody else have an issue with repetitive noise? Oi, 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 oi. Repetitive noise makes me crazy. It would be, if you want to drive me nuts, if you want to drive me crazy, just put me someplace and play the same thing or make the same noise. Like that over and 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 over. I'll go crazy in a very short period of time. Tell you anything you want to know. Anything. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Sharon wants to know if you can dry with a heat gun. Um, I don't know. And the reason I don't know is because I just always put them on the ground and let them air dry because I have so much paint mixed up that I just keep, um, keep the process going. So, I don't know. I wish I knew the answer to that, but I really don't. Um, it might work great. <laughs> How do you like that? It might be fine. I, I've never used a heat gun with it. So. All right. So, let's do... I'm going to use another one of these little things with the foam okay and then that's all I'm gonna do to that layer and let it alone the first layers of these and the paint does change because some of them I've done over time I'll go oh no that's Oh, I love this. Uh, it's like, oh, no, that's the ugliest thing I ever did. And then I look at it again later and I go, now, what was it I didn't like about that? <laughs> you know? But do you see, hopefully you can see, that the Dilutions paint sprays, these are the sprays, the very, very highly water-soluble sprays, really and truly don't um, move around too much. Yeah. Now you can texture this with um, paper. You know, you can crumple up paper. In fact, we'll do that. This is deli wrap.
And I did put gloves in a bottle on my hands before I started this process so that I'm the paint and stuff that gets on my skin, I've got a shot at getting it off easily. Okay, so you see you can texture it with other things. You don't have to use tools. You could use other stuff that you have. Like, just try it and see. And then you got a piece of deli paper, you know, that I scrunched up and it might be usable for something else. Welcome back, Miss Linda. All right, let's pull another one. Let's see. How about this? Here's another one of those leaves. And I've got this zigzag. I love that zigzaggy pattern. And I'm telling you, I have barely dented, barely dented the paint over here. And at this point, this is what my ice cube tray looks like, okay? It, the ice cube tray works really well, I find, because the foam brushes will stand up in it. And I really like that. This is just your first layer of paint. First layer of color. And as you use up colors, then you get to either replace them or just add a new one into the mix. No more ice cubes in this one. No, 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 no. These are Martha Stewart striping tools, I think they're called. Oftentimes, these were used as um, end papers and books. Now, of course, they would be done on thinner papers. Okay, so there's that one. So I used a couple of different tools on it. You'll know the papers are getting dry because they're going to curl up and, and when everything is totally and completely 100% bone crispy dry then I will come back um, I will use an iron and I have a dedicated paper iron not one that you would ever iron fabric or clothing with And I iron them from the back. Um, they will make a mess on an iron. So I have a fabric iron and I have a paper iron. And I have stuff to clean off the back of the irons, but the paper one doesn't come doesn't come clean any longer. So I'm just making marks in the paint. Okay. Just making marks. Some of them you'll be able to see. Some of them you can't at this moment. And I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to come back and see if some of the first ones are dry enough that we can add another layer. Stephen Bland uses his laminator to flatten pieces of paper. That's probably a really great idea. Indeed. That is a piece of equipment I do not have is a laminator. I used to have one that was a cold laminator from Xyron, but it crapped out on me. It was an old one. It literally gave up the ghost. 
and I had to throw it away. Alrighty, let's um, see what we can do here. This is a, a wood graining tool. Sometimes I have great luck with this and sometimes not. Yeah, I don't like it. So, you know, that's why I said sometimes I have luck with it, sometimes I don't. So if that happens and you don't like what you're getting, then just come back and put, you know, scrape. Brush the paint out. So just add more paint. And then, then you can get back into it and do some more patterning like that. Okay? And <coughs> Bob's your uncle. You saved it. Shannon Green uses her press. What kind of press? Rosemary, what kind of press? It is fun, isn't it, Dawn? It is. All right, this is one. This is the very first one we did. You see how the papers curl up? So I'm just kind of manhandling the paper a little bit to flatten it out. All right, so let's go to the next layer. And this time I'm going to do something that um, contrasts in color. To what's on there hopefully oh the press that she makes her custom keepers with got you that would make sense indeed that makes sense now at this point the ink if the ink has been covered by the paste paint the ink is not going to move anymore okay and I try to go over uh, in different directions. Sometimes I can't always tell what I did the first time. Like this. <laughs> I can't tell for sure what I did. So I might just... Yep, don't like that. So we'll just go back over it and brush all that out before it dries, before it sets up. And then add some different texture. Okay, now um, when this dries, you'll be able to see that there is design under it and there's a couple of layers of, of things happening, which when it's wet, it's hard to tell. All right, here's the next one that we did. This one's still a little bit damp-ish. So it's damp over in here, so that's probably going to make some of those colors move around a little bit. And you go, yeah, okay, whatever, whatever. So if you want to see this in more detail, look for those videos here on my channel. Or if you remember the website, you can just find them on the website easily under Art Supplies. I 
I almost always add a couple of colors of paint. Sometimes I do more than a couple. And hopefully you can see that um, it's beginning to get more and more complicated and the the original layers of ink from the stencils and the dilutions inks are now beginning it's almost like water where they start with sinking below the surface But working on top of the um, a nonstick mat is really good. I'm not trying to get it absolutely clean every time. I'm just picking up the excess paint. All right, let's go with uh, this metallic red color. Hopefully you can see the speed at which I'm working. We'll just put red on this whole thing. I truly am not dilly-dallying around here, people. I'm moving. Because that paint does, um, surprisingly, sets up much faster than you would imagine that it did. And you gotta have time in order to get it to, let's go this way, uh, to get the patterning to show up. Now, I don't care if it doesn't show up exactly the same um, in every single bit, bit of the paper because I like having different textures and different areas and different, um, to have it show up different ways. Okay? Bye, Jan. Are you leaving? Good to see you. Thank you again for the wonderful package you sent. I appreciate it so much. Obviously loved it all. Mr. Bear dragging you to the fall fair. Okay, well hello to Mr. Bear and Quentin and Sydney and everyone. <laughs> okay, so let's um, go to... Um, let's see this one these I'm working quickly enough here that a lot of these are um, not very dry which means that I will probably lose some of the lower layers maybe maybe not we'll see It's fun to combine metallics as well as the flat colors on the same layer. So I got very little up here in the green as far as design but I got a lot down here. So what I may do is just come back and put, you know, brush that green on again. And then just pick up something else and texture it. So I get more of it to show. See how much better that is? Yeah. Yeah. Now I like it. Now I can like it. This little thing here isn't working for me so I just want to break that up a little bit okay and this one has some wet paint on it so I'm just gonna mop it up yeah it's called uh, the question is what am I using this is what I'm using it is called art paste from Elmer's 
You can try using wallpaper paste. You can also try using liquid starch if you have access to it. I just tend to use this because it's cheap. Um, you can this little box makes a whole gallon of art paste and then I have it forever so that's what I'm using uh, yeah I'm sure you can use it for other stuff because it's actually meant to use as paper mache I believe okay so there's another piece um, let's take some color that is contrast to what's down there. And as I told you earlier, the uh, once the paste paint coats the Dilutions ink, it stops moving. So you only have one shot at the Dilutions ink in the first layer to get it to move. From there on out, it just starts sinking and sinking and sinking into whatever the background is. And this little bit up here got dry on me, so I'm just going to add some more paint. See? Black magic. And then you can take another, if it's not dry, you can take another tool and you can do even more in that same layer and give it even more interesting effects. So I'll show these up real close after a bit. This is like toast and jelly, trying to get this to come out even. So when you do this kind of stuff, bye Roesta, can you start with magicals? I don't have any magicals, so um, you the the thing that I like about the dilutions paint or dilution sprays is that they move. So I don't know because I don't know the magicals. So somebody else in the chat that has more experience with the magicals will need to answer that because I don't have any experience with them at all. But, as I always say, just try it. What do you have to lose, you know? Nothing. Zip. Zip, zero, not a nothing to lose all right let's go and some of the papers that I think oh that's the ugliest thing I've ever done in my entire life end up being my very favorite ones before it's over with You just never know. Magicals are permanent when they dry. Okay. Not they're not all insanely gorgeous, Dawn. No, no, they're not. <laughs> no, no, they're not. I have to say, after using the tube paints and to make some of the paste paint with. I, I prefer the craft paint. It dissolves much better. So I like it better, I have to admit. I have to say I like it better to use the craft paint. But the tube paint, if you have stuff you want to use up, it's a great way to, great way to use it up. Rather than let it just spoil, use it. Now, this one you can really begin to get the effect of 
that first layer going sinking down this is where you can really get the effect see how that's the spray layer in there is now beginning to go down because now it's had a couple of layers of paint added on top of it so it's sinking down out of view and the more layers of paint you add the more it goes away and the more you look you know people will look at it sometimes and go how did you do that it's not hard Mary, Barb, what would a pulled print look like after you texture? A pulled print as in doing it on the jelly plate, you mean? If that's what you mean, that's another thing I haven't tried. So I don't have a good answer for that one. If you mean using a, um, the jelly plate with it, I'm sure it'd be fine. I'm sure it would just give you a really cool, different kind of look. Joycey. <laughs> Joycey has the memory of an elephant. She remembers when I had a terrible experience with um, deer ticks and what else was it? Some kind of other nasty biting thing. And uh, I was desperate chiggers. I was desperate in red bugs. I got into all of those. Yeah. And they were awful. Horrible. I was miserable. Miserable. And I was desperate to try anything to contain the itch. I mean, I had hundreds and hundreds of bites on my legs. And somebody said to try bluing from the laundry section of the grocery store. Listen, I was desperate enough, I'd try anything. Turn my whole legs blue. I looked like the Smurf of all Smurfs. No, pull from the wet page after you texture. Pull from the wet page after you texture. I am not sure, Mary, I'm not, I'm not totally following what, what you're meaning, actually. Okay, I've used that green up, so that one's toast. All right, we haven't used this one very much. Okay, so we got that. I'm going to add a little bit of metallic up here just because I can. This is the one that I just dabbed with the um, deli paper. You can get very, very, very elaborate with your patterning. I don't. Because I don't care. <laughs> the simple explanation is I don't care. Smush the pages only as a print pull. I don't know. I don't think there's enough paint on the paper to actually get much of a pull, to get much of a print, because it looks like I'm putting a whole lot of paint on here, but really I'm not. So I think you'd have to put more paint on the surface. Um, and I'm not sure it would, I don't think it would work. Because what I like is I like being able to see what I'm doing. That's one of the things I love about doing this particular technique is I get to see what's going to happen. I think I just splattered paint on my face. 
Oh well. Yeah, I'm not sure it would work. Um, because the paint, as soon as you can, I don't know if you can tell, but I am working very, very quickly. And the reason I am is because immediately that paint starts, the paste paint starts setting up immediately. And I can switch to a different tool. If any of you guys can't sleep in the middle of the night, that Mary Miss never sleep because she's doing streams at like 4.30 in the morning sometimes now, you guys. So if you have trouble sleeping, be sure and check out whether anybody's on YouTube Live because that Mary Atia, sometimes she's doing that. I don't know how she does it, but she does. Okay. She must not sleep. <laughs> Bye, Carla. Um, I've done it with other pastes and starches, and I think I had similar results, but it's been a while since I've done that. I always have this. I keep this on hand, and so... Um, my I'd have to go back and watch my own video <laughs> from from the classes that I did with the paste paper. I'd have to go back and look at those because I did use the um, starch and stuff in one of those, I believe. But I couldn't tell you because I don't remember because I I. That was just to show people that there were other ways to do it. So I don't remember. Maybe some of you guys that have tried it can uh, tell, tell Mary your, exam your results. Every time you add wet stuff to the paper, it flattens back out. Then when it gets dry, it curls back up. Bye, Zandra. So I'm just trying to get the paper to flatten out a little bit. All right, we're getting down to um, where some of my colors are getting low. So we were gonna we're gonna be calling this done here in just a little bit because some of my colors are going away. But you'll find the colors that you like, and I, I try very hard to do this with um, lots of different colors, because otherwise I end up going back to the same colors over and over and over. I know, shocker, right? Okay. So we're going to let that one sit. So what I'm going to do now is, um, so we have what, t three layers on this. We have the ink and then we've had two layers. So this is all the pieces I've done today. So we have the ink and two layers of paste paint on these that we've textured. And I probably will do one more once this is all dry. just because I like having it be more 
More is better. More is better. This is not one of those things where less is more. This is a more is more kind of deal. And because the layers are so transparent, you, um, you really can't mess yourself up too much. All right, so let's talk about what you can do with these because that's one of the questions I always get from people. It's like, well, how do you use that stuff? It's like, I don't know. I just use it. Um, so here are some ways that you can use it. And I didn't pull out everything. I just pulled out a few things. So this is an accordion book. So this harkens back to what Jan... Um, the book that I showed you earlier that Jan sent me it's just a bigger version of that so the background of this is Canson mixed media paper and this is paste paper right here okay and this has the paste paint treatment on the Canson mixed media paper um, the inside of this I either just painted it or, or it was a brayer paper. I brayered on this side, I think is what I did on this when I was doing jelly plate printing. But these are paste prints, both of these. And so you can really see here what I'm talking about with those inked, the inked and stencil stuff sinking down beneath. Okay. Same thing. This is one of my favorite prints of all time. I love this one. I love this too, but you know, they're all like my children. I love this one as well. They're like my kids, you know? This is one of my favorite stencils. That's also a crafter's workshop stencil. This was a six by six. So if you use smaller stencils, you get different effects. And I love this one too. Okay, so that's that side. And then you just keep going because it is an accordion book. So you keep going like so and an accordion book can be you know you can set it up if you have two specific sides to the paper then you'll have one look on one side of the book like this and you'll have another look on the other side of the book hi care like this and these are really nice because you can set them up you know on a you can display them on a mantle or something, which is really nice. Here's another one um, done in a much smaller size. It's just a piece of Canson Mixed Media paper, okay? And this was two, two pieces, uh, two, I think it was two lengths of the paper that I put together with tape. So this must have been a I don't know, 14 by 17 or something. I don't know. I don't remember, honestly. Anyway, I put two pieces together to get it as long as I wanted. So this is one side. Here, we'll do it as the book. We'll, we'll read it as the book it was meant to be read. Then we'll look at it all in one. So here is the, um, the front cover. And inside some of the space that was scratched out using one of these kinds of tools then I wrote in there which be inspired create enjoy that's what that says <laughs> Mary says she sees uh, stained glass when doing these <laughs> yeah interesting <laughs> yeah it's a fun size to do and it's achievable and you can take your prints like let's say this one for example I can take this print and I could cut out my favorite part to use in a spot like this or sometimes I just cut them down and I just make you know just whatever size shows up that's the size that gets in the book this is that wood graining tool the bigger size this comes with a bigger, um, you can clip a, a much wider um, end on this to do the wood graining, and that's what this is.
You see candies? <laughs> I love this one. This was done in 2015. Always date your work. Always sign and date your work. So there is that one. Okay, so when it opens up, it looks like this on one side. Let's see if I can get it open all the way. It's too too long to get it in all in the shot, but there's that. Okay, all the way across. And then from the other side, it looks like this. I save all the scraps down to the tiniest little scraps of my paste papers because I use them for all kinds of things. So here's an example of taking, this is, I don't remember what the length of this paper is. I don't remember the, the size. Anyway, I just took a strip of the Cansa Mixed Media paper. So this has not been painted on the one side. This was brayered when I was jelly plate printing. I was just cleaning off the brayer. And so I have that side done. But I can easily paint on the other side, which I have obviously haven't done yet. And then I just, to get this, I just folded the strip and then folded it back and then kept folding until I got these long skinny pages. So that's what I mean by keeping all the bits and pieces of the paste paper because as I cut them up and use them for different things, then I'll have oftentimes these strips left over. Or as I showed you in the beginning, you know, I'll, I'll have used things like I've cut this, you know, cut bits and pieces out of here for whatever else I wanted. But see, I still have this nice piece of paste paper left so I can cut that and you know and use a piece of that or a piece of this and it doesn't have to be nice and square either it could be you know wonky shapes or you could die cut things and make a book that way here's another one by CB this one is the Canson mixed media paper and this is the sprays this is like what I did last month sprays the diluted um, uh, SEI tumble dies with various stencils just to pattern that so it makes a really lovely pale pale background and that makes a really good background for things that are bright like the paste papers tend to be and I've taped two pieces together to make the book the size I wanted so that makes a great background then you can make a belly band put a belly band on to hold your book closed so that works nicely. Here's another one. This one's all ready for its paste papers. Let me see where the beginning of the book is. Here it is. This was another one that was um, from Jelly Plate Printing, I think. Or I may have painted this one, this side I painted just with black and white. So this one I did with a brayer and then stamped on it with uh, white. That's different this is the end of a spool that's the middle of a tape dispenser after the tape was used up and then this side was where I brayered off when I was doing jelly plate printing so this one I love the texture of this this has great texture from that using the brayer and then when you have little teeny tiny things now this is not a paste paper as such uh, paste paper book but when you have little bitty bits of this and that left over, you can make itsy tiny tiny little itsy bitty books. So that's what I mean. I keep all the pieces. This is not paste paper. This is something else, but it's similar to paste paper. Similar treatment. And so I just made little bitty pages and then I stitched them into this little tiny book. So there's that one. And again, I did a um, belly band to keep it closed. Here's a couple of other examples. Again, just, you know, um, different small 
tiny little books. So your paste papers can be, this is paste paper right here. So your paste papers can be, so there's the other part of it, can be stitched into your projects as well as, you know, glued into projects. You can stitch them in. This is stitching right here. This is, both of these are paste papers. And this is jelly plate printed. This was I made in 2017. And one more. This is the last one. And same kind of thing. So it's just, you know, there's paste paper. These are the same size. So sometimes I combine paste papers and other things. This one has two signatures in it. There's another paste paper. Another paste paper. Once you start uh, playing around with paste paper, you will recognize um, you will recognize them very easily as which is paste paper and which isn't. So that is some of the things that you can do, and that's just a few. You can make greeting cards. You can make tags. I did a whole tag book um, here. I will show that to you. Give me one second. The sponsors are going to escape now because I'm going to go in there, but I can show you this other book that I did. They didn't come out after all. Um, these, I think I did these with paste paper. I believe I did. Um, this is a tag book. And this was a book about my dad. So these are just tags bound together in um, to form this little book. So this is paste paper. These are two, two tags. Paste paper, paste paper. These are tags put back to back. So they were not, it's, it's a double tag, I believe is what I did. So all of these in the background are paste papers used to create this book. This book is about my dad and what I used were color copies of images. That's my dad. And these were color copies that I did of his original photographs. And then I used gel pens to embellish them. So that's what I did. So like this was a black and white photo, so I used gel pens to um, make the, you know, give it some pop. And some of the some of the images were not great, and so um, it this kind of thing allows me to still use the photographs. Now you can maybe you can see it's not perfect. See, it's not perfectly perfectly flat anymore. It's like oh well, you know. I don't care. So this was all about him. Some of these were, uh, like these were bits and pieces from another photograph. And these were all color copies, um, not any original photographs. And so I was not afraid to cut them apart and put bits and pieces and embellish things and just, you know, whatever. But the photographs that weren't good, I could still use because by adding color to them and just little embellishments to them, like this was a terrible photograph. That daffodils are not that color, but you know, it worked okay. And this was my dad when he was in college. And that's where he was in college too. So I embellished his band uniform with gel pens. So that's another thing that you can do. You can make you don't have to use the paste papers as the um, as the Im as the pages of the book itself. You know, to make just the book like this is this is just about the paste paper. Okay, this one is it's the background. This is the background for the the um, images itself. Hope that makes sense. Anyway. Okay, anybody got questions for me? Focal point, thank you, Care. <laughs> Sounds like 
right? Any questions and questions? Josie, that's actually that tag book. This tag book is actually a VIP class, so you can see that on the website. Thanks, Mary. Okay, I think that is it. Um, again, remember that the VIP class is tomorrow. Your email will go out with the information about that. Remember the Mandela Madness cards are available. The link is in the description box below the video. Remember too that this comes with an ebook of patterns, designs from the deck. It also comes with a mini course. So if you've ordered your cards or if they were given to you as a gift, don't hesitate to go and get that information because it comes with it. So go there and do it. Okay? All right. Uh, so that is that. What, um, and we get a quick peek at today's papers. You want to see the papers I did today? <clears throat> okay, I'll show them to you from a distance. Hold on a minute. Yeah, I'm glad you reminded me of that because I was planning to show these to you. Some of these are a little wet. So let me show them to you really close. I'll give you a nice close up. Okay, so. You can see this is really wet. I'm going to take that, take that wetness off. Okay, so there's that one. So all of these will probably get one more layer. Here's this one. They really change quite a bit when they're drying. After they're dry, they they really change a lot. I don't know what that what that is about how they change, but they do. And they will be very, very wrinkly or curled at the edges. Not wrinkly, but curled on the edges. Once they're fully dry, then I will iron them from the back with a dry iron. And sometimes I spray the back with some water to help them relax. Everybody needs to relax, including paper. <laughs> Nancy, you had a question that I missed. Sorry, what was it? I missed it. They, um, they just, they changed the colors. Just look different. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I don't know if they darken or lighten or what they do. But the reason I know that they change, um, no, they will never react to wet media again. Uh, -uh because it's acrylic paint and it's and it dries. Yeah. Sorry, I just didn't see it. And the ink has been totally sealed in there with all the layers of paste and paint, so the ink won't ever move again. It only moves in that first layer. Yeah, as much as I try to watch the chat, there's a lot that gets by me that I don't get to see. That's why I got other people watching, got other eyes watching for me. But you can see with the gold, the gold is peeking through, which I love that, the metallics. And I like to, to mess around with the contrast between the flat paints and the, and the metallic paints. Because you just get some really interesting effects. See how lovely the spotty pages are. Mm, my favorites. And here's this one. But they will eventually flatten out. But sometimes I find that, you know, they live in my box of paste papers and jelly plate prints for a while before they get really totally flattened out. Okay, so that is that. I'm going to move my paint out of the way here. Da da. I'm going to move this.
And I don't throw that stuff down the sink. I paint until it's all gone. If I end up with some of it still left over by some stretch of the imagination, I'll get out a big piece of paper and I'll paint it all over the big piece and literally use it up. All right, you coming over? We'll let the sponsors close out the show. Again, if you have any other questions, be sure and ask. If I didn't answer it and didn't see it, put it in the chat again. Uh, yes, I do reuse the brushes. I clean them out, and I've used those brushes for ages. Come here, Chance. Kitty, kitty. Come here. Come here, Chance. Come on. Well, come here. you got to come tell everybody goodbye. Come on. Come on. I've got plastic sheeting on the floor. He's not sure about it. Come here. Foam brushes are inexpensive, but I just don't have the heart to throw them away. So I keep using them. Come here. Don't don't show that part of yourself to the world. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Just a minute, Charles. Just a minute. Okay. Can you lie down? Can you lie down so they can see your pretty face? He's like, nope, not happening today. All right, so we'll just be like this, and Charlie's going to be on the floor fussing. I'm sorry, but I can't. I don't have enough lap for you today, apparently. <laughs> All right, Mr. Chance and I um, can a, can a mixed media gel glue be used instead of art paste? I don't think you're going to get the same effect, but you can always try it. Yeah, you can always try it. So, oh, he is, that's why they live in the studio and they don't have free reign of the studio because of their lovely voices. Come here, Charlie. Come here. All right. Because they have such pretty voices that drive me crazy sometimes. Here we go. Whew. All right. Here we go. Mr. DeMille, are you ready for your close-up? Okay, there we go. Finally. Oh, finally. Somebody cooperated. This is Charlie. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for joining me. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. I will be back on the first Friday of October or before, but for sure on the first Friday of October. Charlie and I, Charlie and I are going to go have a nap now. Thanks, everybody. I will see you again soon. Have a wonderful weekend, week, whatever, night, whenever you're watching. And by the way, thanks for being here, and thanks for watching, those of you that are watching the recording. If you have questions or comments, leave it in the um, section comment section below the video. Because, be sure and come over and check out howtogetcreative.com or a membership website. We'd love to have you join us. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.